Hello my friends, this time I am back at you again with another video, this time about the DNA results of a Saka individual from Kyrgyz Kyrgyzia, Kyrgyzstan. This is where this individual is from, right here from Tian Shan Mountains. I think this right here, the lake to the uh, top uh, right, to the northeast of this location is Isik Kul. Yes, this is Isik Kul Lake in Kyrgyzia. Uh, I've seen uh, pictures of this lake online. I've, I've never been there in real life, but I've seen pictures of this lake. It's really beautiful. Now, uh, in terms of this individual, I think it is a male. His uh, mitochondrial lineage is D4. I don't really know. That doesn't tell me much, but perhaps you know more about it. And his uh, Y DNA, as far as I remember, is J G2A, J2A. Yep, it's J2A, very uh, West Asian Y DNA. Uh, in terms of the uh, ethnicity and what ethnic groups he resembles it's very interesting it's a Saka individual and he resembles uh, actually west asians which, which is very very surprising he doesn't really resemble like kyrgyz or turkic people he doesn't resemble kyrgyz people or or turks or kazakh or any of the central asian turks who live in this region today he actually resembles tajiks and tatars which is definitely very interesting as you can see with eurogenes k13 he scores let me show you he scores 26% West Asian, 21.8% Baltic, 18% North Atlantic. So he's scoring mostly West Eurasian components. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear me right now. Uh, let me adjust the microphone real quick. So he's scoring mostly West Eurasian components. He's scoring mostly components like European and West Asian components. Uh, he's, in terms of appearance, I'm, I'm going to guess, I haven't seen his results with Nashakot yet. I'm going to guess he's quite dark in color. I'm going to guess he's looking maybe Mediterranean or like like um, Iranian looking. But uh, he's very, he's quite Western in his ancestry. And he's, he's quite, you know, European and or Western in his, in his, in his uh, ethnic, uh, ethnic results. He's only 13.9% Siberian, but that's quite, quite a large chunk of his ancestry, actually. Uh, still, 14% Siberian, then 5% Amerindian, then 4% East Asian. Still, for he's he's a Saka, right? So in these Sakas, they had a little bit of Slab grave ancestry. Uh, they still had a little bit of that that East Eurasian ad admixture as well. There's still that twenty to twenty five percent of East Eurasian admixture that he does have, and because of that, you can see in uh, mixed mode Oracle, he's getting more of the mixture of Tajik plus Sami, or Tajik plus Chuvash, or like Tajik plus Tatar. So he's actually got. A little bit of this East Eurasian admixture in the Oracle as well. The Oracle picks up on it. The closest population to him is Nagai for this reason as well. So the Oracle actually picks up on this little bit of East Eurasian admixture that he has. This 14% Siberian, this 5% Amerindian, and this 5% East Asian admixture. The Oracle picks up on this uh, little bit of East Eurasian admixture that he has. And because of that, he's actually closest to Nagai's and not like Tajiks or more of the West Eurasian populations that exist in Central Asia. So I think it's quite interesting. He's definitely a very West Eurasian individual. I think uh, relative to um, Sakas in general, I was expecting Sakas to be more Western. I mean, more Eastern. Uh, relative to Sakas in general, I'm surprised that he is so so Western. But relative to like Sarmatians, relative to Sarmatians in Russia, for example, or or Scythians in Europe, um, relative to these folks, he's definitely got a lot of Siberian admixture. Let's see what he scores with my own ethnicity calculator. This is an ethnicity cal calculator that I developed personally myself. With my own ethnicity calculator, he is closest to Livonians from Estonia, followed by Turkic individual from the steppe, Turkic individual from Caspian steppe, followed by Yamne from Kalmykia, followed by Turkish, Hispanic, then Malta boy, then Corded where speaking as two, then Sarmatian from Urals, then Punjabi Jat, then Israelite. Very, very interesting result. Uh, this was done on the basis of 430 S&Ps, so it's okay. I mean, it's not a terrible, it's not a terrible result. It's, it's just kind of, kind of not very precise. And the closest mixture for him is a mixture of Yamna from Kalmykia plus Malta Boy, and the second closest mixture is Kazakh plus Bailulilai Lithuania Medieval. So once again, it's not terrible. It's not awful. It's just not very good. It's not, it's not the best it could be. Well. Um, Let's see what he scores for Nashakot, what he looks like. Uh, definitely going to be very interesting to check. By the way, my trade predictor did accurately get his YDNA, his J2A. Let's see Nashakot calculator results. Let's see what he scores for that. So it looks like he's got darkest brown eyes. Uh, looks like he's got very dark eye color. 
Uh, the likelihood of for brown eyes for him is 41%. So uh, pretty much for eye color, he's split between darkest brown and brown eye color. He definitely doesn't have blue eyes. Definitely doesn't have blue eyes with ember center or green eyes. No likelihood for any sort of light eye color for him at all. Uh, his eye color is definitely some ca some shade of brown, dark or light brown. Uh, for hair color, looks like he's got black hair. Definitely, it's I mean it's a very definite result. Definitely, very got uh, black hair. For skin color, once again a very definite result. Looks like he's got light brown skin. And for hair texture, once again another very definite result. Looks like he's got straight hair once again. Uh, for coloring related variants found in the file, looks like he does not have genotype for BH3. We don't know, but I mean we can't. We can assume he does not have BH3. We can pretty much assume because of his ethnicity and because of what he scores. Uh, heterozygous for BH2, but he does not have any light color variants here. And he does not have blue eye apotype 1. Definitely very interesting genotype here. Uh, there actually seems to be a little bit of a dislinkage because he has two light color variants in this variation, but no light color variants here. So there is a dislinkage event that occurred in this individual's lineage somewhere. Um, and he does not have any ginger variants in MC1R. So definitely very interesting genotype here. We can actually play around with the snipper free genotypes. We can actually let's, let's do that right now. I'm just gonna demonstrate to you how this works. Uh, we can copy that and put this into here. Put these uh, genotypes into here and see what he scores with snipper free. So yeah, he's got 492 times more likely brown than green hazel eyes and more than a billion times more likely brown eyes than blue with snipper free. Uh, Snipper free is not very entertaining. It's it's kind of in terms of presentation, it's it's very like nerdy, kind of difficult to make content out of that. Let's see the phenotype oracle. That might be very cool to see. So for the phenotype oracle, the closest phenotypes to this individual is this. A very interesting phenotype. This is like a Native American phenotype. So it's this individual looks quite Native American. Followed by this, which is another Native American phenotype. Uh, followed by this, which is a um, European, um, European like European or Middle Eastern or like North African kind of a dark color phenotype. And for the mixture, for the two-way mixture of of phenotypes, it looks like this individual is getting more as a mixture of basically dark plus dark. It's he's quite dark. Um, there is actually a little bit of European admixture here as well. Uh, so, for example, for the fourth model and, and the fifth model, there seems to be even some European uh, European uh, in the result as well. But it seems like this individual is quite Native American in the result and in his facial morphology. All right, let's see what he scores for the biomarkers. For the biomarkers, it looks like this individual has got a above average level of vitamin D, uh, which is good, a below average level of LDL cholesterol, which is once again really good, a below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is not so good, a above average level of glucose, which is good. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's really not. A above average level of hemoglobin, a below average blood pressure, which is good, a above average level of iron in the blood. I wonder if they're going to have any risk variance for, for hemochromatosis. I'm going to have to check. Uh, I normally don't check. Uh, usually the the expected level of iron in the blood panel is enough, but I'm going to have to check this time because like this is, I think this is a quite a high score. For sex hormone binding globulin, looks like they have below average score for that. And for the red blood cell count, below average score as well. So I'm going to have to check the uh, the hemochromatosis panel because they're scoring quite high for the iron in blood. And this looks like they might be having some risk variance for hemochromatosis based on the score. Let's see the polygenic risk scores real quick. So it looks like they have a average score for the epilepsy, a above average score for asthma, a average score for leukemia, a below average score for vitiligo, a below average score for myopia, a very high score for primary biliary cirrhosis, a below average score for stroke, a very low score for male pattern hair loss, which is not so surprising because this individual is not a European, and people who are not Europeans tend to have lower scores for male pattern hair loss. He has below average score for atrial fibrillation. He has below average score for deep brain thrombosis. He has high score for bipolar type 1. He has high score for schizophrenia. He has very high score for type 2 diabetes. He has below average score for Alzheimer's. He has a very high score for multiple sclerosis. Wow. So th this is actually a very high score for multiple sclerosis. Definitely very interesting. So we have to watch out for the HLA panel. I think, I think we're going to see some very funky stuff going on with the HLA panel. Um, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to look at the um, genotypes for HLA and for multiple sclerosis panel as well. 
Uh, for breast cancer, it looks like they have two genotypes for breast cancer where they have homozygous genotype for risk uh, risk variants. That's definitely very unfortunate. For keto G, uh, they have well, they have a, they have a risk variants for keto G in all the important variations. So yeah, they're cooked. When it comes to testicular cancer, they are cooked. Um, definitely very high risk for testicular cancer. For celiac disease, looks like they have uh, one risk variant out of four. Not that big of a deal. For GSS, no risk variants, very good. For celiac, for Crohn's, uh, one risk variant, not that big of a deal. For Reifenstein's, no risk variants. For Parkinson's, one risk variant out of 30. Let's see, is this a big deal? Uh, one risk variant here. Is this a big deal? Let's find out. No, it's not. No, it's not, okay. We're good. So, uh, this person is cooked when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, testicular cancer for sure. So um, when it comes to testicular cancer, this person is cooked. When it comes to multiple sclerosis and HLA in general, this person is cooked. When it comes to uh, type two diabetes and type one diabetes as well, I feel like this person is cooked. Anything that's related to HLA, and I'm saying type one diabetes because type one diabetes is a is an autoimmune disease, and that has direct uh, correlation to HLA. So once again, like type 1 and type 2 diabetes, this person is, is cooked. So um, I guess I'm going to have to see the HLA gene panel, but I'm, I'm not, I don't have very high hopes for that because it's all connected. It's all interconnected together. So I guess we're going to have to see. We're going to have to go and see and see the result itself. For monogenic traits, we're going to move on to that right now. It looks like this individual has uh, Warrior genotype in COMD and MAUA, so he's definitely a Warrior. A uh, higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, really good to see. Uh, higher odds of autism, very interesting. No dwarfism, no dwarfism at all, really good to see. Uh, lower levels of empathy, which is quite typical for East Asians. Typical stuff for East Asians. Yes, uh, I was expecting this actually. So yes, high, five times the odds for type 1 diabetes. This was really expected. So when you have uh, something messed up in the HLA gene, Typically, everything else is going to be messed up as well. Uh, if something is messed up, everything else is going to be messed up as well. So, as I've said, this person is cooked for type 1 diabetes and everything else as well. So, we're going to look at the HL aging panel and we're going to see something really awful there. Uh, so, type 1 diabetes for this person, uh, the risk score for that is going to be really, really bad. Uh, hemochromatosis. Two copies of the H63 D variant. Yep. So that's, that's why he was scoring high for the iron panel. Uh, multiple sclerosis. We see risk variants in the HLA once again. Yep. So once again, we see the same thing. Problem in the HLA gene for cardiovascular disease. Low roads of cardio cardiovascular issues. So the, the the big problem in this individual's genome is the is the autoimmune disease risks. Um. EDAR, this individual actually has two, two East Asian variants in EDAR, so he's got full East Asian genotype in EDAR, uh, which is kind of unusual considering that it's a mostly West Eurasian individual in terms of his genome and his ancestry. So it's it's actually a part of the reason why he's scoring so uh, he scored entirely Amerindian for the uh, for the um, phenotype oracle, because if you look at the phenotype oracle, he looks entirely Amerindian, right? But that's because he's got East Asian genotype in EDAR. He doesn't have any West Eurasian alleles in here. So that actually contributes to the him scoring um, Amerindian for the phenotype oracle. Uh, well, let me scroll down past all of this boring stuff to the HLA panel because I'm really, I'm, I really want to see that. Yes, so you see for the HLA panel, this is looking really bad for him. He's got highest odds for autoimmune disease. This is not really. This is not looking good at all. So he's definitely got highest odds for uh, things like diabetes, type one diabetes, not type two, but type one diabetes, uh, multiple sclerosis, things like things of that nature, Addison's disease. Like it's it's really not it's not looking good at all. Um, for HIV and AIDS, he doesn't have any protective variants. So yeah, uh, the big problem in this individual's genome is the genotype in HLA. Um, that's really unfortunate. Um, let's see what else. Celiac disease has one risk variant here. Uh, what about the rare diseases and, and traits panel? Looks like really no rare, no predispositions for any rare diseases. At least that's good. Um, 
for alcoholism, risk score for alcoholism is 1.3 and, and times the average, basically. Much higher odds for alcoholism. There is the stereotype that uh, people with East Asian ancestry tend to be worse at, um, like, uh, at uh, alcohol addiction. They tend to be more addicted to alcohol. I'm not sure how true that is from a genetic point of view. Like, if um, East Asians are really more likely to be addicted to alcohol, I'm not sure if that's correct exactly. If that's true, not sure. Um. Yeah, well, that's pretty much all there is. I don't really want to talk about much of this, much of the other stuff, but it's really sad that this individual has such a high uh, predisposition to autoimmune disease based on his genotype and HLA gene. Really unfortunate. For color blindness, panel looks like he's got two risk variants, and OPN one is W for color blindness. Um, but then again, it, these are fairly common risk variants. I've seen them. I've seen them quite frequently here. So I wouldn't say it's very probable that he actually is colorblind. For FTO gene panel, looks like he does have some risk variants for obesity. Um, here he's got homozygous. Here he's got homozygous as well. So um, he actually has a lot of risk variants for obesity. Wow. For syncope, based on six SNPs, he's got essentially just spot on average risk score for syncope. Uh, it looks like he's got dry earwax, no body odor, likely East Asian ancestry. Wow, so he's got hom homozygous East Asian genotype in this variation for um, reduced body odor. Okay, and for blood group panel, it looks like he's got blood type O, most likely. But it's only based on four SNPs, but most likely his blood type is type O. Um, the second most likely prediction for him is type A. And then it's type B and type AB, but that's very improbable. So most likely his blood type is type O. Uh, type A is improbable and type B is quite impossible. Type AB is also quite impossible. Well, that's pretty much all there is for this individual. I'm, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you leave a like and share my content with your friends or whatever. Uh, I hope you buy my tool, um, my trade predictor. This is a software that I developed myself. Um, I hope you uh, have a wonderful day and I want to remind you that you can download this file as well as all the files that I cover in my videos from link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.